Yo, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing, my patrons? I'm so happy to be finalizing this chapter four of Outwitting the Devil. This is the last video for chapter four. I appreciate you guys, as always, my patrons, for being there. Um, you allow me to be able to do what I'm doing. And we look forward to further growth, so please share, share and convince other people to come on over to the Patreon. So, you know, guys, we left off on talking about the Declaration of Independence and how that document inspired people to... To, to think freely, to think for themselves, to, to analyze things and, and to recognize their inalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Well, at this point, uh, even though he's talked about Mussolini and Hitler and all this kind of stuff about how these dictators have been bribed by the devil, he's saying that their own vanity makes them think that they're acting on their own, but how he also is working on the president by causing uh, FDR to drift because FDR had begun to drift on the concept of a fair agreement between employees and employer. So, but we know through history, because this book was written 70 years ago, over 70 years ago, we knew through history that that deal finally came true. But what he talked about was the fact that he was priming the presidency. Now think about the office of the presidency, not the individuals in office, but the office of the presidency by to have the people in that office drift to the point where people are ready and primed to give up their civil liberties. We may not have gotten the dictator that he talked about, but what we do have in today's world is the, 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 the people giving up their civil, civil liberties, people giving up their freedoms, people not willing to think for themselves and to continue to only vote for a, a snake on, that's, that, a two-headed snake that's, that's attached to the same body that we still do that. And in this current presidency, uh, I would imagine three more years of what we just got in this year, that people will be ready for anything. Those who voted for President Trump, I would imagine after three more years of what they think that they were going to get but are not getting, will be primed for almost anything. Almost anything. It will be a situation of anything is better than that situation that we will be looking at in the next three years and he talks about how he's primed the office for that and that is exactly what we see in the world today we see in america like that that people are primed for a dictator They're, they may not be primed for an actual dictator but the, what they are primed for is to repeal the ability for a president to run more than two terms which effectively can create a dictatorship if you have a president a president that's popular enough what we, we, we've already given up our civil liberties from the 9-11 issue. And we've consistently done more and more now with the whole the threat of ISIS and the threat of a terrorist attack. Here's the thing, you are more likely to die in a car accident, more likely to die in a robbery, more accurate, more actually, more likely to die at the hands of an American than you are actually to die at the hands of a terrorist. But yet, the framing that has been given to you is that the terrorist is the terrorist threat is the biggest threat to your life. When the biggest threat to your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is the, your own government and the own citizenry around you. Can't say a word. But Napoleon Hill wrote about this over 70 years ago. That he will paralyze personal freedoms. And that is exactly what we are living in today. Now, it goes back into how he's talking about how drifting is the most common cause of failure in every walk of life. Because drifting destroys the power of an individual initiative. Second, the drifter cannot help, but cannot help, can, can't be helped from the opposition because the opposition is not attracted to anything so soft and useless. What he's saying is that the devil is the one who, once he gets you drifting, he begins to mold you. All you have to do is drift on any subject and he will mold you into a complete drift, a complete procrastinator. That it is not the opposition that molds you. The opposition looks for things that are steadfast and hard, things that are determined, right? And then he talks about, is this why a, um, so few people are wealthy and the majority of people are poor? And it's because poverty is like a disease and it's contagious and it can run rampant through a neighborhood and through a community. Because when you see people not achieving, then you develop the same habits of those non-achievers. And therefore, you don't get the things in life that the other people get. Now, those who have learned how to build business, those who've learned how to have the family, get the house, do whatever it is they have decided to do in life are the ones that are considered to be non-drifters. This is why most that 2% of the people are non-drifters are usually the higher income people according to this book. And we can see that in life. 
I mean, let's be real. That is a true statement of life. Those who just allow for life to occur to them, when we go to the law of cause and effect, are you going to be the causal factors? Or are you going to be the effect of other people's causal factors? Those who just allow life to happen to them, the effects, they are the ones who are just drifting through life, whereas those who are causal factors are the ones who are creating their life, creating their universe. So you may not like the fact that those people generally have the most money. They generally have the best houses and cars and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a byproduct of it. Now, yes, can some of those people become drifters because they fall captive to their own vanity? Do they fall captive to personal possessions? Yes. But it's that spiritual wealth as well as the material wealth that enables you to be a non-drifter. He said that men who know how to get material things of life generally know how to keep out of the hands of the devil as well. We know that it's not true with everyone, but in the 2%, there's plenty. Um, drifters acquire nothing except um, that which one that no one else wants. The strong, their strong desires for material and spiritual riches will never, um, I, he has few victims. See, poor people just don't have it. They're just drifters, sorry. I know it makes you, it may feel some kind of way, it may make you think that it's unfair, but who said that any of this was fair? We said that in the very first chapter that none of this is fair. Who, why should the devil be fair? Why should life be fair? It shouldn't be, and it never will be. Nature in itself is not fair, you know? So um, if that's what you're looking for, you're missing out. Now, he talked about how one of the greatest enemies of the devil is this whole, um, excuse me, great elixir of life, is the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was causing people to be able to get up and travel, connecting towns and cities, and, and cities that the radio was bringing about information that people could know what's going on around the world and not just in their little community or waiting on the newspaper that information basically was being available to more people. The biggest of these at that time frame was that libraries began to pop up on, in every city filled with books so that the wealth of knowledge for etern for generations and generations was now present for any individual to be able to go and take on, you know, take in hand. I mean, the library system was amazing because it allowed people to go and read for free, to get information for free. Now we have the internet. And yes, it is bogged down with the opinions and the thoughts and false information and misinformation, but it is the one who thinks for themselves, who dig through the muck and the mire to find that information which is beneficial to them to elevate their mental capacity to think for themselves. Um, he talks about how he has, he doesn't have any control over any non-drifters past or present. That he only controls those who do not think for themselves. And in the next part, he, he describes a drifter. I'm not going to tell you all of them, but he describes a drifter. They lack self-confidence. They never accomplish anything through their own effort. Um, they're always sick and ailing. They have no imagination. They lack control over their emotions, which is a very big thing for a drifter because you make emotional decisions. They have opinions about everything, but have knowledge of nothing. So, yeah, so we had this continuous lack of control. Um, they neglect to cooperate with those around them, um, very intolerant, narrow-minded, ready to crucify people. Um, they begin many things but don't complete things. So we have this whole list of people who are drifters, and it's basically a list of people who don't accomplish, who don't um, do much. For okay, hopefully that's the last interruption. But, so, then he gives a um, sign of what is a non-drifter. And I like some of the things that he says about the non-drifter. He says that he's always engaged in doing something definite through some well-organized plan, which is definite. He has a major goal in life towards which he is always working and many minor goals, all of which lead towards a central scheme. And then he gives like characteristics about him, you know, that they make their decisions. They don't um, make excuses, that they answer up front, that if they don't know the answer to something, they don't try to lie about it and just go ahead and just say, hey, I don't know. You know, but they'll find out. They're usually called. Now, there's one part that I disagreed, but I understand. And he said that I used to, um, he used to be known as a go-getter. But in modern times, he's a go-giver. And we know that we give to get. But then he says you will find him running the biggest businesses in town, living in the best streets, driving the best car automobiles, and making his presence felt wherever he happens to be. 
Now, I will agree that most of your non-drifters are people who are running the biggest businesses and that sort of thing. But a non-drifter is also a, a man or a woman who, who goes to work and take care of their family. They plan for their future. They, they don't live above their means. They ensure that, they're, that the love flows through their household, that the kids have what they need to grow up and develop and become better citizens, that they are very, they may not want to, may not have a desire to run the biggest business or have the biggest cars and that sort of thing. But their desire, that they are matching their desire, they're accomplishing what it is that they do desire in life. So I understand what he means, but this can encompass a lot more people who aren't running the biggest businesses in town. So, um, but I understand the thought process here. And the thing about it, he is an inspiration to all who come in contact with him. Like the story of the uh, the gentleman who never made over forty thousand dollars a year. He parked cars for a living at a parking garage, and he took all this financial advice from people who worked in the buildings next to him. And he had like seven hundred thousand dollars when he retired. That's the kind of person who is not a drifter, and that's will be included in this. So I wanted to add that part in there. Um, but he says that you know Napoleon Hill asked the question: Is a non-drifter born with some mental, physical, or spiritual advantage? Not not available to none and says no the major difference really is that they simply decide to think for themselves anyone who decides to think for yourself you are a non-drifter and then you have to commit that to action he said in order to cure it he would tell the non-drifter to wake up to to recognize that you are a non-drifter to start having a, de a definite purpose a goal to be able to work towards that goal to think for yourself to accomplish tasks. Start with small tasks and then begin to accomplish larger tasks. Um, to apply, give useful service, help other people, um, find your gift and move in that gift. You know, those are the kind of people who, that's how you stop being a non-drift. That's one of the ways to stop being a non-drift. And of course, throughout the rest of this book, there's so many other ways and so many other things and concepts and mental changes that you'll have to get into in order to stop drifting, stop procrastinating and basically get stuff done, right? Um, and he talked about how some people doubt the existence of the devil. I like this part. He said, "I wouldn't worry about that if I was you." He said, "Those those who are ready, those who are ready to be converted from the habit of drifting, will recognize the authentic, authenticity of this interview by its soundness of counsel. The others are not worth the trouble it would take to convert them." Basically, those people who will go against it, who will say that there is no devil, that this is a bunch of hogwash. They can't recognize the message because they can't get past the messenger. Some of you who are listening to this may not be able to get past the messenger. You may not be able to get past me as the messenger. You may not be able to get past Napoleon Hill. You may not be able to get past the idea that he's asking the devil how to become successful in life, how to get out of non-driven, that most people are headed towards what the devil, what we as humans consider hell. You may, we may not. And he said that he'll sit back and allow his minions, his agents to, to condemn you if you think otherwise. And they will. They will. The religious groups will condemn you. The, the, the political groups, the teachers, the, all these people will condemn you if you start to talk about how people can think for themselves and that, that they are being, that these other professions are being used by the devil and not by the opposition which you would call God, which they would call God. That the pastors and priests are being used by the devil. The imams and, and, and the monks are being used by the devil to keep people captive. Not saying that they should be atheists, but they should have an understanding of the creator and the creator out on the outside and the creator on the inside, which is the same, right? It's the same, but different. You got to go back to the hermetic videos on mentalism to get to that, to understand that more deeply. If you've already watched them, then you got what I mean by that. You know, I'm not meaning literally. But basically, we must take this with sound counsel. We, we must understand when it was written, but be able, but knowing that it is still applicable to today. And because of that, it makes the book great. Now, next we're gonna go into chapter five, which is continuing the, um, the interview with the devil. Then after that, we start getting into hypnotic rhythm and what keeps you stuck and how to begin to change it uh, more rapidly. If you've already read ahead, shame on you. Come back, be patient. But if not, I appreciate you guys. I want to thank you again. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.